Hello, a great welcome to Idea Statica tutorial. Myself, Jaraj P. This is tutorial number eight. Here we will demonstrate how to model and design a portal frame Eve's hodge connection with a bolted end plate. The example connection used in the tutorial is shown here. We will discuss how to verify this joint for a given set of design loops and also to obtain its design resistance. So let us start Idea Statica tutorial number 8. So we will develop this model from uh, the connection wizard. So let me just enter the parameters. So this I'll write down. Shelter. And uh, here the description I'll write down. Column rafter launch connection launch connection and we'll write uh, select the steel grid as S2 sulfide and the bolt will be M24 8.8 and the concrete grid will not be touched and the design code will be as per uh, the euro code. So we will select the section with a, a small hunch here. So let us just create the project. So this is the model that is uh, directly imported from the connection wizard. So for this case, what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, delete the some manufacturing operations that are not required. For example, here we have the stiffener uh, uh, stiff one as highlighted here. So we'll just delete it first. Okay, that is deleted. And then we have uh, example the stiff two. Let us see what it is. Okay, this is the stiff two. So that also will delete. We don't require for this uh, tutorial. So delete it and regarding stiff 3 that also we will delete. Okay, so this is the model that we will be using. So we'll, our uh, blank model or uh, the model to start the tutorial will be the whatever is shown here. So let us start uh, modifying the various components as per our requirements. So here first of all we will change the column size and the column size will be it is my UB section. So we have uh, so let us just double click this and then we'll have it as a UB. So all and then what we can do is that we can select the UB profile from here. So this is my UB and in UB we have to select UB it is a 762. So maybe that is we may have to go a little bit down. So it is a UB 762. Yes, it is over here and that divided by 267 by 173. So 762 by 267 by 173. So select it. OK. And OK. It's OK, fine. So <clears throat> we have modified the column size. So now all other parameters. So this will be entered. And uh, all these anchors, uh, it will be minus 90. And all other parameters will be kept the same. Now let us modify the beam member size. And the beam will be a smaller size again it will be a ub profile so let us just add it okay so here it is okay so let's select the ub so from the all so we can start selecting the ub profile from here so this is my ub okay and in ub we have to uh, select the ub 530 so it is a ub 533 actually it is so let us just uh, Yes, UB 533 by 210 by 92. So this is the profile. So that's okay. So okay. It's okay, good. So we have uh, uh, populated uh, all the member dimensions. Now let us uh, straight away go to uh, modifying the end plate uh, parameters, including the size as well as the bolt configuration. So let us uh, start editing the EP. So as you can see here, one more thing that is in beam B, our rough triangle will be making an angle of a 10 degrees as already indicated here, 10 degrees. That means this is my rafter beam. It will be making an angle of, it is not a strictly horizontal, it is making an angle of uh, 10 degrees with the horizontal, okay? So that is marked here, that is gamma 10 degrees. So let us go straight to that end plate. 
so let us start uh, adding so obviously the member one will be there it will be connected to b and uh, this this will be not specified connected to column and the material will be s to sulfide and the thickness will be we'll keep it as a 25 mm okay so because it's a larger dimension larger uh, rafter beam so we may require a larger end plate as well so and this will be bolted arrangement and uh, we'll specify the dimensions of this end plate taking the profile edges as a reference so let us start fixing uh, the dimensions t we'll keep it as a 20 and uh, the left dimension these are all the uh, pre-calculated dimensions 20 and then uh, we'll keep the bottom at say 582 so 582 so you will find that uh, it gets uh, automatically changed then you will find that the end plate has increased in size 52 and the right dimension will keep it as 20 okay this will be 20 and uh, we don't uh, require any backing plate here and neither the notch so so this is the end plate that we have uh, developed so now let us uh, straight away go for uh, arranging the boards as per our uh, requirement so we'll be using m 248 boards and the top layers let us fix it as minus 60 so this would be so right i think that we have to change this we have already changed the dimension we we'll keep it as 20 mm 20 mm now if coming to the boards the top layer will be kept as a minus 60 so this would be minus 60 and then we'll keep it as a minus 90 minus 90 minus 90 minus 90 and minus 90 we can also simplify the syntax but i have mentioned all the uh, you know rows very specifically here minus 60 and all others being minus 90 and the left layers will keep it as a minus 30 that is kept the same and the bottom will keep it as a 452 so this is a 452 and then we have for minus 90 minus 90 and this is my minus 90 and we have got the right layers as we'll keep it as a minus 30 the same and all other parameters will be the same and except the wells wherein we have to change that okay as far as the flange is concerned obviously we have to go for a larger size so we'll keep it as a say 12 mm 12 mm thick okay fillet weld uh, and that is on both sides that is regarding the flanges and regarding the web obviously we may require a smaller one so for the web we'll keep say 8 mm so we'll just modify this say the sample point between 8 mm and so fillet weld on both sides so means we have uh, uh, populated our end plate along with the required bolt arrangements uh, now one more thing uh, is that uh, we need to change as you can see from this uh, figure the uh, haunch dimensions are to be revisited so let us uh, change the dimensions of this uh, okay this uh, haunch which is uh, okay uh, executed through the widener uh, manufacturing operation so let us uh, change the dimensions of this widener so obviously this on member uh, b and this is related to the end plate and we'll keep it as an s2 sulfide and thickness will keep it as a 11 mm 11 mm because this is uh, thickness is a uh, fixed so that is almost the same as uh, the rafter web thickness and the cross section parts will be our uh, web okay and the front and all these the dimensions will be kept the same and the width obviously we have to change it because now we find that is a very smaller one so we have to make it larger so it is a 520 and the depth obviously uh, we'll keep it as a, a little bit larger so 750 so this is a 750 uh, okay so you can find that it is being properly made okay and uh, the shape is selected as a triangle with a flange okay and the flange thickness in that case has to be specified we'll kept as uh, as uh, the flange thickness as a 15 mm 15 mm and the flange width will keep it as uh, say 200 flange width will be 200 200 and uh, then we have uh, the the welds the web, web weld okay that will be chosen as uh, the 8 mm 8 mm with the s2 sulfide grade and on both sides so means uh, as you can see that uh, the haunt is also properly modeled here okay so now it's a time that uh, uh, let us see that we have got a cut to here okay that tells uh, how what must be the modeling uh, to be used okay in a 
using the column dimensions uh, in related to the rafter. So it remains uh, here it is a member C and the cut by B and the bounding box and the cutting plane uh, will keep it as a uh, farther one okay and the direction will be okay the perpendicular we can keep it as a perpendicular and the offset and the offset we can keep it as say in this case as a 150 mm so 150 mm so that is uh, done so you can say that this is how the column is modeled related to the geometry or the profile or uh, the alignment of uh, the rafter beam so having done that our model is complete so now let us see the model uh, it is important that before running the analysis we check all the all the components of the models see that uh, the weld sizes the connectivity is uh, well maintained so let us just uh, look into our model so we have it as a so just a, so we just so you can say that here it is so you can say that is some uh, the bolts are uh, okay, kept on the top okay here you can see that then the top portion and near the haunch we have got only the three rows so you can see that uh, all the components are well connected to the wells that is very important okay so and here we see that uh, the column is uh, okay it is uh, it is a uh, okay stopped uh, at horizontally it is not in alignment with the top uh, okay top profile of the rafter beam okay so now i think it's the time that we start okay apply the loads so in this case we'll apply say for example vz as say minus 400 so minus uh, minus 400 and uh, then we'll have it as uh, we'll keep it as a 700 here okay that's my 700 okay 700 that's okay so as you can see that uh, these are the all the loads are being applied so now it's the time that we start performing the calculations that means uh, please remember we are performing, performing a EPS analysis that is basically a plastic strain analysis so let us uh, press the calculate button and see whether uh, our model is uh, good enough or not okay as you can see that yes it is a hundred percentage analysis done and the place it has been taken to a point three percent a little bit larger strain level point three percentage and the boards the utility ratios of the order of say 82 percentage and the wells it is a near 100 percentage and the buckling not calculated so now uh, let us just check uh, which of the which of the components are critical in our uh, model so we'll just straight away go with the check model and then let us just investigate the distribution of the strains first okay so what we do is that we'll just uh, press that uh, plus strain and then just mash it and just to see out of interest means that uh, which are the components that is uh, getting critically strained or uh, the stress distribution is concentrated so if you see this model so we are finding that uh, everything is okay on this side there is no trouble but if you see rotate on the other side what we see is that here there is a, some kind of a, an accumulation of the strain near the web and let me just rotate the model again once again yes there is problem very near to the column flange as well this could be possibly uh, due to uh, you know the the yielding or the accumulation of the strains because of uh, the yielding of the column flanges uh, due to the drying action of the bolts and the web it could be because of the okay the it's yielding yielding of the web panel in a tension so now it is important that you know we have seen that the place it has been stressed to 0.3 strain is to 0.3 percentage so it is better that we think of some alternative so that this kind of a strain concentration could be avoided so one of the best solution for this would be to introduce a smaller rib stiffener okay, it need not be it need not cover the full uh, you know web width uh, instead you can provide a small rib stiffener uh, okay uh, so that this kind of an accumulation of the strain can be eliminated so let us start adding the small rib stiffener on the column web so we will straight away go to the manufacturing operation so we can add a stiffener so this let us start uh, changing it all the parameters so we can see that this is required on a column c and uh, this related to let us uh, you know keep it as not specified and let us keep the material as a 2 and the thickness uh, 
I think uh, the uh, 16 is a larger one, so Tanamon could be because it's a small stiffener, so the Tanamon is good enough. And let us keep it on both sides. The X positions, this position will obviously tell us from uh, the position of this stiffener with respect to the end of the member. So the X position in this case, that's from the top, will keep it around, say, 120 mm. Remember that while positioning this stiffener, that it do not interfere with the bolts, so this dimension is kept accordingly, 120 mm. So and uh, we'll keep the alpha inclination as a zero, and uh, the W, the W it is nothing but uh, the width of the stiffener. Zero means that it is taken directly from the dimensions of the column, so we'll keep it as a zero. It is conveniently dimensioned to, to suit the flanges of the column, and the offset uh, that is the uh, dimensions of the edges with respect to the column profile. So we'll keep the offset uh, uh, the top as zero and the offset bottom we'll keep it as because we want a smaller one. So let us keep it as a, some it's already capped it as a five zero three. So you'll find that it is uh, automatically okay made smaller. So yeah, yes, it is uh, made smaller and the gap will keep it as a zero and the weld and uh, let us keep the chamfered corners because. Uh, it is coming in the corner, so we'll like, keep a small chamfer. And the wells, let us keep it as a smaller one. I think that the forum should be good enough. S275 on both sides. So now let us see how the stiffener looks like in our model. So we'll just keep it as a, just rotate it. So we can say that it is, a, so you can see that this is a small stiffener that is placed here. Okay, so let me just uh, zoom this portion. So we can say that it is, look here. So these are the two stiffeners that is added. These are the popularly known as the rib stiffness and they are properly welded. And at the same time, you can see that a small notch is also made here. Now, uh, look here, this is, you can see that the stiffener is properly positioned so that it do not clash with the bolts. That's the reason why we have set this exposition comfortably at 120M to ensure that there's no clash on this uh, rib plate with the uh, bolts. So having done that, now let us straight away go for uh, the analysis. So we, we know that it is the same force, minus 100 and 700. So let us calculate what could be the change in the, okay, the strain as well as the stress levels due to the introduction of this new rib stiffener. So let us just calculate it. Yes, that's a good news. That's a, you know, the strain, it is reduced from 0.3% to 0.1% and the bolts and the welds, okay, their forces are uh, practically almost the same. So now let's just see the, uh, currently, what will be the level of the plastic strains in the various components. So as you can see that, uh, okay, here in just a minute, I'll just rotate it. So what we observed in the earlier case was uh, an accumulation of the strain here that's almost eliminated here we can see that there's a small very small strain here only so as you can see that we can just rotate to see the other side also you can see that here also we don't have any problem okay so so means that the strains are well within the limit 0.1 percentage we have reduced and now if you are interested in seeing the various assembly the plates okay we can see that for example there's a column flange on this side we don't find any problem and here also, this is the, you know, the column flange that is connected on uh, the end plate side. We don't have any kind of a, you know, accumulation of the strains. So we can also see the, for example, the end plate also, or uh, the stiffeners. For example, if you see the stiffener, that's a, this is a small stiffener. We have a small accumulation, a small strain level at, at here. Okay, that is acceptable. So now let us straight away go to the distribution of the forces in the bolts. Now uh, that is being, so regarding the bolts, we have seen that there's a utility ratio of 82 percentage and that is being governed by, uh, so if you see this row, we find that these bolts are critical. That means if you select here, yes, it's 81.7 and 81.7. So as expected, we find that uh, the bolt utility, utility is governed by the top of the bolts. And as we go down from the flange, uh, there's a rafter flange, what we find that there is a reduction. You can see that it's only 55 now. Here it is now 55. But as you go down, you'll find that it is uh, reduced, okay? So this is 16.8. And uh, if you go to the bolts,
So on the lower side, what we can see that we can see that uh, the bolts, okay, they are not at all uh, subjected to any kind of uh, the tensile forces. You can see that, for example, if you select this, so the bottom rows, they are uh, subjected to no tensile load at all. So this uh, uh, means that we can make use of these bolts, you know, very effectively for the shear because we find that these bolts are not practically subjected to any kind of a tension. But on the other hand, if you just see the distribution of the shear forces, that because these are the distribution that we should study to see how the entire system behaves. Okay, so now let's see here. So this is the shear forces. You find that at the top rows where the tension is critical, we find that the shear is very lesser, it's just 3.3. And as you move towards the okay, the flange of the beam, you find that the shear contribution. Okay, the web of the beam, you find that the shear contribution in the boards, it goes on increasing. Here you see this 11.6 and uh, here it is 16.7, that is these boards. That means as we move downwards, we find that the shear contribution, okay, the shear in the boards increases. Obviously, we expect a sudden surge or a sudden increase in the uh, shear forces in the bolt rows, uh, that is in the haunch portion, because we have some component of the compression that is getting transfer to the end plate, which keeps the boards in this zone critical. So we find that the shear in these boards are very critical. Okay, fine. So that's all about our study. And the wells also we have seen that is uh, very much all right. And uh, coming to the distribution of the stresses, that's also very important. We see what are the components. For example, if you see the end plate, let us just quickly for our uh, discussion, if you see the end plate, that is, I think that it is through that, this is the board, so plates, let me select. So let me see the end plate, EP1, this is the EP1. So look here, this is the distribution of the stresses in the end plate. So as expected, we find that there is a stress, okay, concentration of the stresses near the portion where, okay, the, the top flange of the beam is connected to the okay, end plate. So as is evident here, so we can just zoom it. So for example, here, uh, so look here, so we find that it is, uh, yes, in this zone is very critical for the end plate. So if you want to see the end plate distribution, you can also just rotate it, look here. So it's the same thing what is being represented over here. And if you uh, see, for example, uh, the portion is the stiffener 1A, and 1B, you find that uh, okay, at the portion again near the flange, we find that there's a concentration of the stresses. So if you see from the top, so this is a portion where it is uh, critically stressed. So anyway, this is a simple tutorial tells you the introduction, how the introduction of a very small ribbon stiffener can affect the performance of the entire system. So that's all for this tutorial. So please subscribe to my channel because uh, I am going to upload, uh, I think that the 20 or 25 of very interesting complex tutorials, including the earthquake, uh, okay, resilient connections. So please subscribe to the channel so that the as and when it is uploaded, you get a notification. So thanks a lot for your patient uh, hearing and uh, please come forward with uh, some of your uh, valuable comments so that we can go on improving our tutorials day by day. Okay, so have a nice day.